Hello everyone, we've got some pretty interesting community stories lined up just for you. That's right. Kai, did you know that the world has just celebrated World Toilet Day? Wait, what? World Toilet Day? World Toilet Day. Hmm. <laughs> Every year, 19th November. This is our 20th year celebrating it. You know, she's right. There is a World Toilet Day, and World Toilet Day is an official United Nations International Observance Day to inspire action to tackle the global sanitation crisis. And get this, worldwide 4.2 billion people live without safely managed sanitation. That's insane! You know, I didn't know that doing your business was such serious business. Sanitation is a major issue worldwide. But that's not relevant here in Singapore, right? We've got clean public toilets, restaurants, shopping centres, everywhere. Even in coffee shops? Uh, well, maybe not everywhere. I mean, some hawker centre and coffee shop toilets, let's just say they are less well-maintained. Mm -hmm. Most of them cannot make it in my top 10 toilets list anytime soon. Wait, you have a top 10 list for toilets, Gladys Bay? Mm, you don't? No. <laughs> I'm kidding, I don't have a list. <laughs> okay, I knew that. <laughs> anyway, for the first story, our intrepid city Joe Morag is somewhere in Singapore investigating why some public toilets are not up to standard. Take it away, Morag. Maybe because World Toilet Day was coming up, it occurred to me I hadn't been in a coffee shop toilet in almost two years. Since Covid began, in fact. And I decided it was time to go and take a look and see whether there had been any improvement. As I suspected, things have only gotten worse. I'm baffled as to why our toilets are in such poor state. After all, isn't Singapore known to be the world's cleanest city? The state of neglect and disrepair is, well, it's really bad. Broken tiles, dirty walls, smeared with, well, I think we can all guess what. And similar in the doors. Long time since this bin was emptied. There's a tremendous irony about having a sign which says, stay safe from germs, wash your hands with soap and water, above a sink that is so dirty. I made repeated visits to the ground floor toilets uh, in the food court and each time filthy tissues, dirty wet floors, smeared doors and vomit and food waste in the basins didn't change. The fictional cleaning schedule posted at the toilet entrance was just that, fiction. I want to know why our toilets are so dirty. The first person I turn to is none other than Jack Sim, the founder of the World Toilet Organization. He's in London, but has agreed to speak to me via Zoom. The coffee shop owner has a completely opposite point of view. They think that if the toilet is dirty, nobody will use it and they will save so much money on water, soap, electricity, and cleaning services, and even repair. So they told us that the dirtier, the better. And we say, how can you say such a thing, right? Mm -hmm. You are not caring about public hygiene. Now I go to the government and I say, in such a case, why don't you find them they say, no, enforcement is not the solution. The NEA has another narrative. Blame the user, the Singaporeans. Mm -hmm. They are so bad. Mm -hmm. Now, once the Singaporeans agree that they themselves are the culprit, now NEA don't have to do anything okay. anymore. Just go to the coffee shop toilet and look at how sick the dirt is and ask yourself, is this been clean for the last three months? Even when they don't use the toilet in that coffee shop, the cooks use it. And the cooks yes. don't have soap. They cannot wash their hands. Then where do they wipe their shit? They will wipe their shit on your food. I want to convince the coffee shop owners to keep their toilets clean. So today, I'm going to show them how little it takes to do just that. 
Okay, right, let's, let's get in here. Give it a good scrub. Look at the difference. 10 seconds of scrubbing, and already it looks significantly better. Okay. There we go. Look at the difference, and compare it with this one. There's absolutely no excuse for this. Now that the cleaner has seen the difference, maybe he'll actually try and do what I did. It doesn't take much, and people will appreciate it so much more. Changhui? Uh, okay. uh, yeah, okay. I've just boosted up one coffee shop toilet. But for sweeping change, Jack thinks we should use both old and new strategies. This is City Joe Morag McGee for Singapore One. Thank you, Morag, for exposing the slimy, smelly underbelly of some Singapore's <laughs> coffee shop toilets. Hey Kai, hmm? would you visit a dirty toilet if you really had to go? Mm, depends on my level of urgency. If you're really, really urgent. Really, really urgent. Mm. I'd do army style. What's army style? <laughs> I'll tell you later, okay? <laughs> but right now, let's move on to something more palatable. How about that? Like food? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Our next story is all about noodles. Now, did you know that this year marks the 50th anniversary of instant noodles? and that there's an instant noodle themed experience playground right here in Singapore. Wow, that sounds really exciting. City Joe Abbey will tell us more. I love my cup noodles and instant noodles. So today I'm going to take a risk and head over to Sulaping Good, the first instant noodle themed experience playground in Singapore. And yes, you heard me right, I used the term that's because the Google reviews haven't been very positive. In fact, it received a rating of 2.2 over 5 stars. And with the main comments such as, for a ticket price of $21, there isn't very much to see or do. And that the free gifts are, well, not of very good quality. But I do love my instant noodles. So I'm still excited to go anyway. And after that, I'm going to give you my unsponsored unbiased review of Slurping Good. Slurping Good is the first instant noodle themed experience in Singapore and is brought to you by Invade, the company behind initiatives such as Artbox and Shilin Ye Shi. This is part of their Spice Up Your Rocho Experience campaign, which aims to round out the consumer experience with elements of play and shop. The Experience Centre has 13 installations and they are designed according to different ingredients that go into the cup noodles. Did you know? This year is the 50th anniversary of cup noodles. Nissin introduced the first cup noodles product in 1971. So, what is your dream cup noodles flavour? At the end of the visit, you can customise your own bowl of noodles. However, it does come at extra cost. I didn't add any extra toppings, and my bowl of noodles still came up to $10. So by right, you shouldn't compare to the museum in Japan where they can customise their own cup noodles. By left, you can't help but compare and think about how this is basically just a customised bowl of noodles. 
Your ticket also entitles you to a chance at the claw machine and a goodie bag, but there is no physical signage or staff designated to direct you there. So to collect your goodie bag and also for the claw machine, you need to head over to another building. And uh, I'm sure they have reasons for that. It's just as a consumer, and then of course, I wish everything was in the same building. Plus, there were no signage to tell me where to go. I had to ask the staff myself. Then I know that, oh, it's at the other building. It's also not easy to win at the claw machine. During the time that I was there playing and observing others, the winning rate was about 1 in 15 tries. So I have ended my trip at Slurping Good. I actually thought the first part was quite fun, the playground. Especially if you're going in with the objective of, I, I want to take photos, then there really are a lot of photo opportunities. However, towards the end, to get the goodie bag as well as the claw machine, you have to ask. If you didn't know, you would have just missed it. And also, this is the goodie bag. Um, the tote bag is not of tote bag quality. There is one packet of noodles. Mm, this one also a bit disappointing. I'll rate it 3.5. Yeah. Especially I think nowadays Singaporeans are running out of places to go. Then yeah, this place is possible and can visit Slurping Good. A big shout out to the staff on the ground. Thank you for being so nice and so friendly. This is Abby from Singapore One. Thank you, Abby. The place looks very Instagrammable. Mm -hmm. And it also looks like a lot of fun for the kids. And it looks noodle-licious. <laughs> noodle-licious! I like that word, makes me hungry. <laughs> now, the storyteller Isep, who was also very good with words, once said, no act of kindness, no matter how small, is ever wasted. And I think that that is especially true of the lady featured in our next story. I completely agree. Sherry Soon is the founder of two charities, Be Kind SG and Autoimmune Diseases Singapore. In this story, Sherry talks to our very own city Joe, Chris, about something we should all strive to be, kind. Here's Chris. What's up, Singapore? This evening, we're meeting an extraordinary lady who, despite her limitations in life, managed to set up not one, but two ground-up movements. I really admire her energy and her tenacity. You know what? I don't even have the energy and the strength to pick myself up from the ground to go to the gym. Hi, I'm Sherry, founder of Becoming SG and Autoimmune Diseases SG. I started Autoimmune Diseases SG in 2013 and Becoming SG in 2017. And before that, I was a special needs educator. I have an autoimmune disease called vasculitis, which is actually inflammation of the blood vessels. And it's quite uncommon and people around me didn't know what that disease was. So I felt quite lonely for you know, the initial years that I was diagnosed and actually really out of wanting to find someone else with an autoimmune disease, maybe even not vasculitis, I started the group. And even though this journey was very, has been very long and you know, affected my life greatly, I think I've also received a lot of kindness in return. And in 2017, uh, I started Be Kind SG because I felt that if everyone is a little bit kinder, then you know, the, I think the world and life and society, you know, will be much happier as well. I guess one of the challenges would be the getting volunteers to uh, organise activities because I think in the beginning, probably most people will prefer to participate. I think a gum like, cannot grow without the support of the volunteers stepping up to organise because one person cannot do it alone. Yeah, but with a community of people, then I think, you know, the mission and the vision and we can, you know, impact, uh, for example, more residents of even more uh, adult disability homes if you can have more volunteers to step up. So when the COVID pandemic first hit us, all our in-person volunteering activities had to stop. I guess then as a volunteering group, <laughs> we were kind of left with no activities to do. But at the same time, uh, because that was the beginning of a pandemic and I began to see how everyone was very anxious and fearful because we really didn't know what COVID-19 was about at that time. And I had this idea to pack some care packs for Tandosing Hospital and CID and that was way in the beginning when 
not, not really anyone was thinking about the healthcare stuff at that time and uh, it was a very simple idea but I didn't know that I was you know given like 7,000 care packs uh, to pack and then I thought that it would be very meaningful if I can have 7,000 handcrafted uh, thank you cards. I was very heartened because I really got a, a lot of support uh, from like for example from many different schools about 20 schools and organizations that came in to help out uh, with the thank you cards and then we had a company sponsor you know different items for the care bag yeah I, I never thought that I would be thinking about how, how to get 7,000 tote bags yeah so I think that was like the positive thing that kind of came out where you know everybody um, stepped in you know to, to do something together at that point of time for the healthcare staff. One of the challenge of COVID-19 pandemic is that prior to COVID, we actually visit uh, and engage the residents of adult disability homes every month. You know, we bring them for outings, you know, we just go down to the homes to have that face-to-face uh, -face interaction. But until now, so I would say it's almost like going to be two years already, we have not been able to step inside the home, you know, and, or visit them. And we've been engaging them via Zoom as we continue on with the Zoom session, you know, uh, at the end of every Zoom session, they will still ask us like, you know, like, when are you coming back uh, to visit us? So, uh, I think the relationship we have with them is very precious. And uh, I just hope that one day we'll be able to go, uh, go and uh, visit them again. And, you know, we can get along uh, better together. So, I hope that, you know, with Pika SG, we can try to get more people to accept and understand and you know, form relationships uh, with you know, many people outside of their own community and then we can all form an inclusive society. I hope to like, make even more impact um, you know, with Pekan SG. Anyone like, can make a difference. So yeah, I really hope that people will step up to share their stories. All of us have one thing in common and that is 24 hours a day. If only we could open our hearts as wide as Sherry did and make time to be kind to the people around us and to the less fortunate in our society, the world would be a better place to live in. And this is your City Joe Chris for Singapore One. Thanks Chris for that story and thank you Sherry for all the good work you and your volunteers do. <laughs> what are you doing Kai? <laughs> What does it look like I'm doing? I'm flexing, I'm sucking it in, you know? I was just thinking with COVID and everything, I really haven't been to the gym as much as I should. Oh, you shouldn't do that. Exercise is important, especially as you get older. Uh, older? <laughs> okay, I mean, um, exercise is important at any age. Better. <laughs> but so is a healthy diet. <laughs> Absolutely. So, here's City Joe Bruce talking to bodybuilder and fitness coach Kenji Ju about the importance of diet, exercise and facing any challenge put before you, even if it's chicken rice. What's up Singapore? And I'm on my way to the Civil Service Club to meet Mr Kenji Ju, a finalist in this year's Mr World Competition. I want to find out from him how to lose some weight. Hi, hi Bruce. Welcome to Any Kind Fitness. Hi, I'm Kenji Ju. I'm PT for Anytime Fitness and I'm Mr. World Finalist 2021. Kenji is now a fitness guru and strong health advocate, but it wasn't always the case. I used to be in gang and take drugs. I went for prison for two times. When Kenji left the prison 11 years ago, exercise was a way for him to leave his troubled past behind. When you want to build out a bodybuilding, so right, our training is very difficult and need to discipline. We need to train every day, need to eat clean, have enough sleep. Our eat clean, right, our chicken cannot be all those like, uh, it's unfavorable, unfavorable one, you, you won't like it. And it's cooked by water, steam, or it's just very no taste one. Here's my cups, cooked with water. Here's my chicken, cooked with water, a bit of salt, ginger or garlic. Yeah. And this is what I have for a whole day, what I eat for a whole day. And by all means, you guys can go and try for it. And I can tell you, it's not delicious at all. But despite his dedication to stay clean and his hard work, his journey was not without hiccups. Uh, 2014, I break my legs, I broke up with my girlfriends, 
And after that, I unable to participate bodybuilding competitions. So that moment is the worst, my downtime lah. And it's the worst period of my life. After that, uh, a church brother guide me in my walk and few brothers supported me in my fitness line. So later on, I slowly pick up myself and back to my fitness line again. Very simple, you just put your hand, you just get a grab of dumbbell, push your elbow, and you tie, and you squeeze. Yeah, for this bicep. For the bicep? Yes. Okay. Oh my god! You can do it. Okay, like this. Put it here. Yeah, just put it on your, yes, put it on your. Then? Then just curve. Yeah. Ah, don't move. Ah, let's go. Then go again. Very good. Guys, forget it. We can face any challenge in our life when we put our mind into it. All you need to do is believe in yourself. Walt Disney once said, all our dreams can come true if we have the courage to pursue them. So, what is your dream? This is Bruce for Singapore One. Thanks Bruce and thank you Kenji for sharing your inspiring story. And, and for sharing that chicken rice recipe which I'm sure many people will try out, right? Would you try it? Absolutely, you know I love chicken rice so I am going to cook me some nice chicken rice and he has also inspired me to get back to the gym so that's all good. Okay, I'm not inspired to go to the gym but I would like to try that recipe. With that, we've come to the end of another episode of SG Now. We hope you've enjoyed the stories. Please feel free to share with us any community story you want us to feature. Till our next episode, for more glimpses into Singapore life, have a great day. See you next time on SG Now. Bye! Bye!